Hello, ActiSage here on the Sage channel, and as you can see, we're at the Load World section here, where you can see we got a few different worlds I'm going to be looking through, and it's sort of a behind the scenes of a few of, or at least one of the joint survival episodes that was scripted and had some interesting stuff to show. I might do a few more of these videos just on other little things. But first, starting out, we're going to do this something on the abduction episode, where we had this big dreamscape thing happen, and I actually ended up doing a little bit extra. So let's go ahead and load up the abduction map right here. And I've actually already loaded this. I've switched it over to creative mode. That way I can fly through stuff. And we'll let this load up real quick. And you can see I'm standing here back on Hephaestus, ages and ages ago, back when the Inix station was still in one piece. And of course, this is where we started our episode, and we actually had a little bit of, um, well, of course, but since a lot of this episode was scripted, it actually ended up taking us a take or two to get it, so I'll let you see that footage right here. Three, two, one, and go. So, welcome back to our survival. Once I, again... I fucked up. Hold up. Oh, you... My names oh. are still on. My names oh. are still on. Oh. Three, two, one. So welcome back to our survival. We've been doing a little few little edit. Yep, in between episodes we've been doing some edits. Let's carry on. Okay. Okay. But <laughs> 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 like Saint Regard that just got busted. And once we finally got a take we were happy with, of course, I had to cut to another scene, so we started here, had our little fun times, couple fun times, and then we moved on to the actual ship, which was flown by a friend. It came flying out here, of course, I believe the friend actually stopped it. Uh, I can't quite remember who it was, but you can see this is the ship that they were flying around in. This is actually a ship made by Aaron, as you might have guessed. You've probably seen it in a few different things on Tazu's Goodbye when he flew off to do his military stuff, which actually ended up returning from a bit early and deciding he was going to go into the Air Force instead, I believe. You can see that we use the same ship just with Swedish flags on it and stuff like that. It was, uh, it's a pretty nice ship. On the outside, it's fantastic. On the inside, if we were to go ahead and look, like a lot of Aaron's ships for show, the inside of it is a bit of a mess. If we were to fly in here, you can see it's, well, it's got a lot of just the same area repeated because he does a lot of copy and pasting of existing ships and mashing them together to make really, really interesting looking stuff. But as you can see, the interior of the ship, because we were going to be cutting to a different scene, really didn't have to be finished at all. So you just have little bits of a previous ship. But if I was to look over here, where we did land and finally ended up going inside, we can see the big piston wall that we had here. And you actually see that we had to do a lot of work here to make sure the pistons were sticking out far enough. We had to put in a few extra reactors, I think, and actually toss some uranium in them because we did the first part here in survival, I believe. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And it required some tweaking to the ship, of course, to make sure the piston was nice and hidden. But it was pretty awesome. And of course, this is the room that we were in. The lights came on and everything, and we ended up having to cut through these panels here, and then jump down this hole, which actually just dead ends right here, because, of course, I at that point, I cut to a different scene. Uh, if we were to fly through here, though, as you already saw, it's not really anything in here. Because we didn't have to see this, there was no point in anything being built, so Aaron did a great job at just building what was needed, and, of course, we all worked together and tweaked all that. Anyway, let's cut on to, actually, where we went after I dropped down that shaft, and you see that the outer side here sort of showed where the shaft was, if you look closely enough. So let's go ahead and cut ahead to that. Okay, so here we are in the same place, and basically after we had cut through the wall and stuff, I did a quick save, that way I could quickly cut between them and make the transition a bit more simple, and you can see all of a sudden I have all of this down here, <laughs> sticking out of the bottom of the ship. That's because, as I fell, I didn't want to just have to do one simple cut, I wanted to do the one cut where I fell to here, and then I'm looking back up, I believe, and then I can continue down this huge passageway of stuff that I have here, and basically after a while transition to another one but it gave me a lot of space to basically say different things and then still have those things on in the background if need be and all sorts of stuff until i finally get down here i believe this was the point that i actually cut over into the completely dark world when i went through these because as you can see i can open these up and i have all these little hallway bits here including a thruster which is a bit scary to open up and see and of course, you can see that looking outside, it's just this weird random mesh that's now sticking out of the bottom of the ship, which wouldn't have made much sense previously. And then of course, like I said, as I was here, I went ahead, hopped up like this, floated through there, and then did a quick transition to another world. And of course, I had nothing behind that door except for just a panel, that way you couldn't see through the seam, because I think back then we still had a bit of a seam that you can see through 
a door. That might actually exist a tiny bit now. Anyway, I'll load up the next world, which is the pitch black world, and I'll show you guys how I navigated around that and what I did in that world. And here I am loaded up into that next world, and you can see right away that I had actually made a save point at the point where I was passing through that vent. That way I could, if I screwed something up, as soon as I went through, I could easily just reload and I'd be at that same exact point. And you see that I, ooh, actually this looks like, ah, right, yes. I'd made a point of not opening these doors because I closed them before I'd gone through that in the original version. Now, if I was to fly out here, and by the way, I did do this entire version in survival mode originally. I've switched it over to creative just to find my way around and be able to show it off a bit better. You can see that, you can see <laughs> where I dropped my tools first off before I jumped down the vent again, because of course I wasn't supposed to have my tools anymore, else why wouldn't I grind through stuff? And then you can see that down here, this is of course where, as I just said, you, I loaded up, and now of course I'm in the big maze where I had all those looping hallways, where if I went down one hallway I was suddenly elsewhere again. And of course a few creepy things like one of these little guard guys standing here in the dark red room, which... It's actually terrifying to open that door and suddenly see. I had it carry on so that I had all these doors over here, I believe, that had interesting little looping ways. I think this one, yep, leads to where the marker is. And this is just sort of like the idea that I was in a dreamscape, so little aspects of my inner workings of my mind would be floating around in here, including the fact that the marker was very, very present in my subconscious at that point. Very, very nice little thing. And of course, I had to have a bunch of little bodies around here. Unfortunately, I don't have a necromorph model or maybe I would have tossed one or two of those hidden away, preferably out of reach. Let me fly back through here. And then heading down that way, of course, leads to the larger marker area. And I think this way, yeah, it leads up into a vent. And I think the idea here was if I fly all the way up, I'm pretty sure the idea, because it opens up, I can't quite remember how they all looped, but I think the idea was it ends up leading me back down there. I can't remember quite how they looped. And of course, out here, as you can see, it's like it's, it is completely pitch black. And of course, I have all these beacons set out here to with a very, very short range on them. I believe if I get right next to them, actually back then they might not. Yeah, actually they don't project anything. I'm thinking of antennas. It's been a long time since I've been here. And I was just using these as basically an easy way to get around from point A to point B, remembering, okay, the top one over there should be that place I need to go to. So I was basically running a lot of this on memory and just using these lights in the dark to get myself around. And I wanted it with this dark skybox because, of course, we were using that later when I meet back up with everyone else. But also I wanted it because it makes everything darker. Like down this hallway, in the normal world, you'd actually be able to see that door still slightly. But luckily this one makes it just pitch black. And of course I can carry on go through these doors and lead us into this big overpass here where it didn't really show through but there are tons and tons and tons of bodies and markers and other creepy stuff out there and if you go ahead and watch that episode back you can also hear that I did a lot of sound work at this point to actually have little whispers coming from different directions and all sorts of stuff like that and of course if we were to go ahead and get out of this thing which we have an opening right here we can fly through I don't think that was actually there in the episode you can see that we had these big walkways and they sort of are separated here. They stop there. So it sort of looks like you could have at one point gone all the way through and led into there. As if it was something from Dead Space 2 almost where they had a lot of caged in walkways. And as I said, there's lots of markers and stuff floating around here. If I do an Alt-Shift F12 to bring up the collision meshes, you can actually see the mess that is in this room. It's a huge huge amount of markers and stuff. I was originally going to have lights over at the top shining down, but they didn't actually work out so well. It created a lot of lag and stuff like that. Like, as you can see, my frame rate in the game has actually slowed down a whole lot right now just because I've started the or started showing the collision meshes. So I ended up just leaving this area dark. But you can see all the way down there at the bottom, we did have one huge, huge marker, which I was hoping would show up pretty well. But if I do Alt-Shift F12 again, you can see that not much actually showed up in the dark, unfortunately. Showed up a little tiny bit, but not nearly as much as I had really wanted. Uh, let's go ahead and I'll shift F12, that way I can find my way around. You can see a lot of the walls are dented up and stuff, that's just because as I was spotting in all these markers, I was slowly tossing them. That way their placement would be slightly random, and that's why a lot of them ended up up there in the corners and stuff. There used to be a lot more of them too, but I deleted them to save on frame rate issues like that. Okay, now that I'm back here, we can actually go ahead and shut off the collision mesh and actually just run through here. By the way, there are a lot of little access doors along the sides as well. This sort of gives you the idea that somebody could access that huge chamber we were just in through other ways. Now, I believe these areas here, yep, this would have looped all the way back to the whole starting area where I was just 
originally came from. So you can see I had built a mirrored version of the start. And at this point, after I'd flown out the bottom, I would fly over and out until I found that little beacon way over there and then fly over to it and then start recording again because I did a lot of cuts like that. And of course, I was doing it all in survival, as I said. So if you watch that episode, my health or my health and my energy are ping-ponging up and down a lot. Uh, because I died a few times while going through some of these spaces. And in fact, you can actually see my body at one point. I make note of it, and then it disappears. Uh, that's because I had gone down. I think it was this one here. And I'm supposed to be able to go through this door, and I would have crouched something like this and pressed that button and opened it. And of course, I wouldn't have looked down. The second I pressed that button, I would have cut to me standing up here in this little doorway up here. It was a whole huge setup, actually. So I would have cut to me standing if I can get through the door, there we go, right here. And of course, as I just fell down there, I have the door up there as well to mirror the room I had just come through a second ago with a light and everything. But of course, if I walk out here, it's just dead ends, nothing real. But it's sort of so if I'm standing here and I open this and I look down, I can see a room there. If I look back, it still looks vaguely like the previous room I had just come from, which would have been this one right over here. So I could press this button or go to press it, instantly cut to me standing up in that room, turn around, you'd still see this open hallway like this, it would look like the same thing. And of course, next walk through, I could still see that open like that. And because of the angle, I wouldn't be seeing out into the void. Pretty cool stuff like that. Moving on, we do also have these two doorways here, which I made them loop back around on themselves. And of course, that was another simple cut. If you start walking through this one here, it goes down to a down path, and then we have a door here. If I open this, it leads into an exact duplicate of the basic little starting area we were just in. So as soon as I hit this door button, or as soon as I look forward, I would just simply run back over here and then cut to me standing right here. So as I walked out, we'd once again be in the exact same area we were just at. And of course, I have the little tiny bit of the mirrored version. That way, if I turned around at this point, you would still see the same hallways and stuff that we had just been in. Took a lot of cutting between things if I did do a lot of cuts and stuff. Or if I did do these loops multiple times. Because of course, well, you have to do that. <laughs> because I'd have to cut back to where I was a second ago every time I did that. Took a lot of running back and forth and a lot of editing. And as I said, it meant that my health was always at different points slightly. But I figured better to have the health always dropping. That way if you looked at it. And the dreamscape feeling of it all, it seemed befitting. I believe I also had the stairwells over here that went up and up forever and looped around. These are a pretty simple thing because, of course, they are just a stairwell that goes up for miles. As you can see, I'm running all the way up here. Jesus Christ, I really did make these go for miles. And I believe at the top, if we can ever reach it... Oh boy. Simply what I would do in this is when I did a quick turn, I'd cut the footage there and then splice and there we go, finally made it to the top and you see I have a beacon all the way up here to give me an idea of, hey, that's the top. I'd splice the footage there with all the way at the bottom of the stairwell, which I think was, I think I might have just gotten a bit turned around. I know it's insanely hard to see out here, but I basically splice it in with me running back up the way I just came. Uh, yeah, I think this leads back down. There we go. So it's very, very disorienting out there. And basically I'd splice it together with footage of me coming up these stairwells down here. So especially usually when I do a quick turn like that, because it's such a quick turn, I could easily cut it together with another quick turn and then voila, I'm back up here. I believe my way that I finally got out of the maze was this door right here. So if we pop this open and we fly through this, come on, uh oh. Oh yeah, I have another door there, I forgot. Uh, let's go ahead. I think I might have cut it, the footage, right when I hit the second button right there, or when I started flying through, but at this point I think I cut it so that, yeah, there's a wall there, so I would have cut the footage to another point. Uh, let me go ahead and reload this map just really quickly with the lights on, that way you can see what it actually all looks like, because it's a bit of a mess, and if I go into spectator mode, I can actually show you how it looked from here. This was, well, actually, I don't really need to reload it to keep showing you. I can just do this. So you can see, this is actually how I built it, too, because I built it in pitch black. That way I'd know what it looked like. And so you can see the big tower here that we have all the markers inside. Uh, this is, like, the starting hallway, I believe, from... Yeah, some of this is just leftover, actually, from the original pathway that I would have fallen down. See, here's the big engine. 
here's where I'd flown through. This was all on the previous map I had loaded where I'd go through this door and then open that and be cut into a different scene. I had a bit of this here just in case I needed to do pickups or something. And then I have marker and stuff all up here. So you get the gist of it. I kept it all connected because in the dark it was helpful to follow that. And as I said before, you can see all the beacons that I have sitting about that I'd use to navigate. Now after the scene that I had just shown where I would have gone through that little doorway up at the top of this hallway right up here, that would have cut to a scene right, I believe, here, yes, where I have basically the same double doors here, then this little gap, and then another set of doors here. And this, of course, leads me into this area here where we would have been in the jail cells and stuff like that. And let me actually go back to my character. We're going to go ahead and fly just through here. This will get us out of this silly, silly complex. Uh, and actually, we're going to need the Alt-Shift-F12. Actually, now I can just go all the way over there to get into it. You can see I have the beacons to guide me. And then hop into here and the funny thing is i actually recorded all the stuff i just ran through after we had recorded the stuff as a group so basically we recorded the group stuff and i said okay well i want to have a little bit more something special that way people will watch mine have something a bit more different to look at oh i think i actually had a scary person standing there or something but uh so that way people would have something a bit different to see and so i basically ran in here i knew that because we had already recorded our whole scene after this point that I believe Aaron was sitting in that chair, so I basically just came in here, sat down, and then, as I said, quick camera movements makes it easy to make cuts, so I just basically started moving my head around, and then did a, I believe it was either a quick cut or a fade, to suddenly, I look over there, and Aaron's there, and suddenly there's people talking and whatnot. Pretty cool. From then on, we, of course, went through this way, had our little pick up the guns and stuff. Uh, I believe these tools weren't supposed to be here, actually. I think somebody tossed them down there. Might have been me, even. And it was like, oh, well, crap. And I think we just played with it. You know, like, oh, just don't pick them up. Don't pick them up. And I had more whispers in my ears and stuff. But pretty simple and straightforward. And from then on, we actually walked into this area here where we had all those lights rising up from below us. And if I can get the... There we go. Bit of this so I can actually remove a block. And I'll do an Alt-Shift-F12. You can see out those windows where it just looks like an abyss, we actually had all these strange machines we had put together. And if you look down there in the footage from the actual episode, I think you can see just a little tiny bit of somebody running along. And what they're doing is they're pushing these buttons on the side here, which I had set up to... Oh, well, actually, it looks like they might have broken over the time. Yeah, it doesn't look like this is actually working correctly anymore. But what it was supposed to do is turn on those pistons and turn on the spinning lights at the top and they would raise up to give a sort of an effect. Now we found, of course, that makes a huge mountain of lag. No real surprise there. Let me go ahead and shut off that so we can actually move a bit quicker. And so the second that we actually go through this door up here in that episode, once I get to, I think, right here or maybe here I crouch, I think, there's actually a cut there that you might have noticed. And that's actually us going and reloading the file after we shut off all those lights down there. Or maybe not even reloading the file, but at least somebody ran back through and shut off all those lights because they were creating a mountain of lag for everyone. And of course, this next part has this big battle scene and everything where we start getting attacked. And of course, we make note of the fact that, hey, this whole area looks familiar because it actually is familiar. If we do the Alt-Shift-F12 thing again, I go in the spectator and fly out. You can see that... Well, none of this looks familiar from out here, except for maybe this large pillar coming up to this weird connection point, and then a very familiar sight of our original, like, UFO construction pad where we built our original ships. Uh, that's because we had taken the whole at original asteroid map, our original asteroid base, done a control C on the base itself, and of course that leaves the asteroid behind, and pasted it in here, and then built this sort of strange dreamlike mesh all around it. And you see that we have, if I do Alt Shift F12 again, these little areas here where you can look out and originally I think it was a bit easier to see. Yeah, you can see through some of these panels here that you can see the bits of metal out there and stuff like that. So the idea was, hey, all this looks vaguely familiar but nightmarish. You know, like these engines here originally they were into the side of the mountain and stuff like that. And this little walkway up here, little pathway down that led to the other side where Tazu was building his stuff. You know, the whole idea was, hey, this is all very familiar but something's wrong with, well, all of it. It's pretty interesting. Even here, where we originally had our little memorial we were going to build to Henry that never really got finished because our whole world got too laggy and we needed to move on because updates were coming out at a pretty quick pace and the old world was starting to have some serious, serious issues and the asteroid, of course, kept somehow warping our base to no end. 
scary stuff. We had to abandon that base quick or else our whole base was probably going to warp itself into destruction, it seemed. Anyway, carrying on from there, of course, we came up here. We had our little battles with people. Of course, at this point, we were all in survival. That way, we could actually defeat people. Uh, this room here, of course, was the original first room inside the asteroid base where we had all those stalactites and stalagmites meeting each other and stuff. Over here is where we had the door that led to the one random marker that I had seen at one point. Nothing there now. And I think we still had client-side mods, so I had a mod over here. Actually, no, that was ages ago. That was season one stuff, where we ha I had seen the marker when the other guys couldn't, so I knew where to go to get something, or something like that. We would used that trick a few times. Huh, green light. I don't think it was supposed to be that color. But yeah, you can see that this is that same exact room from our original asteroid base. It's just that now it's all inside metal instead of stone. It's pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool. And of course, our little buddies kept spawning. A bunch of people helped us out on this episode to spawn and run in as enemies. Uh, then we get to this area here, which originally, when we had first found the stone base, of course, I had a bunch of markers and stuff down there. For this, we just blocked it off. But you can see it still looks familiar if you've seen Season 1. If we pop this door open, this is where we had these crazy things out here. I think originally Aaron built one of them and put it out there. And I was like, wait, wait, no, 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 don't. I went out there, I severed it. And if we actually go into spectator mode again and turn this on, that way we can see it. I had grabbed them, I would severed them, and then I moved them all about so we'd have this sort of like dreamscape, almost like a Tim Burton film, sort of weird thing of all these little people standing out there in prison cells if, as if you're in hell or something strange like that and all these people looking back at you. I thought it was pretty cool, it was a lot of fun to set up, and of course we had to go ahead and put a reactor on the back of them and put uranium in it, because we are doing all this in survival. It took a few restarts because of silly things like that, where we're like, okay, let's go! We'd load it up and all the lights would be off, or, you know, we'd be like, wait a minute, did we put uranium in there? Go check it, and of course it wouldn't have it in there. It was pretty cool to set up and stuff, and these were really fun to set up, because of course you just copy them and maneuver them, and paste them back in and they'd be in place. Of course, you'd have to make sure you weren't moving it like that. Anyway, back into the character. You can see that's the view we pretty much got out of that window. Let's carry on down this path some more through this crazy dreamscape stuff here. I believe, ah, that must have been in the original world. I had a marker up there. Uh, what's through this doorway here? Right, scary person. The idea that it would scare us off. And actually, I had that vent sort of behind it as if we did go through there and loop us back into the original area. Our control room where, where I made the ceiling go up forever, <laughs> a long way up at least. And then I stuck a bunch of flames and stuff in there. That way it looks like, okay, that's not exactly right. And of course, one of the few places you can see down into the black abyss down below. I'm not sure if I actually looked down there. And then I think I didn't really look into here either. If I did, it's just random stuff because some of this is just like okay you shouldn't look in there you know simple rules of thumb just see that the ceiling's up and then move on because of course also if we had jumped into a control panel and did this you can see that well you can basically screw with all the systems here as Tazu knows well as he smashes in the ceilings in the past here's also where we sealed off the way down to Tazu's like working area uh what else do we have here uh not too much different here I don't think we had anything too special here um more warped metal from what used to be our dump hole where we just toss stuff down there every now and again. That warped itself up. The original place where we brought Tazu back to life here. It's like a walk down memory lane in a way. Uh, some of this I don't remember being so warped and twisted when we actually shot the episode. I get the feeling this is like issues from our from loading such an old map into a newer version of the game. What else do we have here? We got this door here. Pop open, and it's just a sort of similar thing to the dreamscape boxes, the hell cages that we had I showed you guys earlier, except for that's just a simple wall. Uh, what else do we got? Nothing really here. I don't think there was anything spooky in here. Nope, just more sealing it off, random stuff. I think we actually, yeah, you can see we still had gold and stuff in some of these things, because of course we just did just copy this over from the original world. So, had a few things. Rule of thumb was just don't open up everything. Uh, here was a pretty cool thing I don't think came across too much in the episode is the fact that we had all these walkways or drops below these stairwells. So if you look down below these, you see we have this huge drop down there that just goes on for what seems like forever. And actually if I was to go ahead and go in spectator mode, oops, uh, do the Alt Shift F12 thing again, you can see that from, oh wow, yeah, you can see we had a little bit of something we were building there at one point. I think it was going to connect this somewhere, I don't know. But you can see this is below right where I'm standing now. See, I'm standing right there. Below it, we had this huge sort of drop that went below all the stairwells and stuff and sort of led all the way down here out into the abyss. 
But the idea was, you know, a lot of dropping ramps below where you're walking as if everything's funneling down, down, down. A lot of creepiness to that, I felt. And of course, because everything was pitch black, it did add to the eerie factors of it. And you're looking down below you through this, like, tiny grated metal and seeing just an abyss is sort of disconcerting. And then I believe at the end, this was the last part right here, where we press this button and we'd fade to the other scene. Oops, sorry, I might have bumped my mic there. We'd fade to the other scene. And of course, out here, there wasn't much to it. It was just the respawn bay where the people who were helping us out would be respawning. And you've heard the voices of the people who help us out before in some of our other episodes and stuff like that. We use a lot of the same people. They very good people. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is a strange mess to look out here at this. Antenna, I think, was actually originally so we could find our way back. Uh, yeah, some of this is also... Actually, no, this antenna, I think, was... Just a leftover from our actual original survival base. Same as this, you can see this is like, I think parts of Tazu's big sur big upside down office that he was in the process of building. All stuff we left in, looking at it now, it's sort of like, why didn't we cut this out? We could have improved performance, but eh, whatever. It all got done and it was pretty cool. After this point, I think we wake up after being rescued by Inik, I think it was. And that's a pretty simple and straightforward thing that I'm not going to show uh, the... Well, I guess I could show. I think it was the damaged Inix. So let me go ahead and load up that Inix ship real quick. Actually, I've just decided I'm not going to show that too much because a lot of that Inix ship was Aaron. I mean, a whole lot of that Inix ship was Aaron. The pine leaf was... Aaron built that thing. If he wants to show the behind the scenes on that, I'll leave that to him. We have two versions of it. The We had the nice one that we were first on and then we had the more damaged one where I and him and everyone else really went through and we broke up a lot of stuff and we'd all help build little parts of it but Aaron did the majority of it so I'll leave that to him if he wants to go ahead and show that anyway that's it for the first one of these sort of behind the scenes thing so of course eventually we do end up getting back to our survival world where I think the Inix station was destroyed and stuff like that uh, pretty much we, the idea was we're just gonna, we just wanted to break up the survival a little bit, which as time went on it felt like we were more and more just having too many scripted episodes for me personally, but a lot of them were fun, some of them not so much, but this one was one I was particularly happy with just because of the out of this world nature of the dreamscape thing. Anyway guys, thank you a bunch for watching, I hope you enjoyed this quick look, or actually a slightly lengthy look probably, at the behind the scenes of the Dreamscape episode. I'll probably do one or two more of these just to give you guys a look at some of the other little things we've done. Maybe if I can find an episodes I have enough save files for and actually something I can walk through and talk about like this. Anyway guys though, once again, thank you a bunch for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I shall see you guys next time. Bye.